Hey, hey, good people, what's happening? David Taub here, co-creator of nextlevelguitar.com. Hope all is well, and I hope your guitar journeys are going famously. And today, what I have for you, I've been getting lots of emails from students who are asking for suggestions on some practice tips. They're either hit a wall or they're not sure what to practice in their lead guitar journey. They're not sure how to go about it. And um, they were wondering if I have some suggestions. So I threw this little video together. I don't know, I got like 10 or 15 tips. This is for all levels. We'll start off with the easier ones. So if you're a little bit more advanced, just fast forward through the first couple minutes. And then you get into the, uh, the little bit more advanced ones. And I hope these tips help you along your lead guitar journey. And before we start off with the actual tips, just a couple quick side notes that remember, as you're working on your lead guitar journey, you don't want to neglect your rhythm playing. It's so important. We all want to burn on solos and we all want to play fast and, and, and melodic and cool and come up with the great sounding solos and stuff. But just remember that solos are only small pieces of songs, right? Um, uh, you're mainly as a guitar player for the most part are going to be playing rhythm so you want to keep doing all those things with your rhythm playing you know you want to keep working on your timing and your strumming and your rhythm and you want to keep working you know with a metronome and you want to keep learning new chords and embellishments and progressions and you know it's just so often neglected because we spend so much time on our soloing and your rhythm is like I said you're gonna be playing that most of the time anyway so your your lead playing is really only ever going to be as good as your rhythm playing so you're working on your rhythm playing as well as your lead playing and one of the first things that I always tell my students as far as a practice tip is schedule it schedule it schedule your practice time um, that is pretty critical uh, man we're all busy in our lives right we all have so much going on whether you're going to school or you're going to work you got families you got girlfriends you got boyfriends we got social schedules we got things we have to do right um, and uh, whatnot so it's so important to write it down on your schedules if you don't have a planner book get one and ink it down you'll be so much more uh, uh, apt to do it if you write it down you know since I started writing, I write everything down. I have a bad memory for small, <laughs> short-term memory. So if I don't write it down, it doesn't get done. And I do that not just, you know, I'm, I'm big on working out too. I go to the gym a lot and I'm, I'm, a big, I'm a big gym rat. So, and I schedule my gym workouts. I write it down. So I know on a particular day during that chunk of time, I need to go to the gym. Just like I write down my practicing. I know during a certain part of the day, I'm going, I have set aside to practice guitar. So write it down. That's so critical. And then also, the other thing is, you know, you have to be very diligent about dividing up your practice time into segments. Maybe spend, you know, the first 10 minutes on rhythm, the next 10 or 15 minutes on lead, and then you break that into subsets, you know, working on whatever it is you need to work on in your guitar journey, whether it be your techniques like string bending or learning some new scales or working over jam tracks, you know, set aside some time to work on your tone and to play through your amp, right? Set aside some time to investigate gear. And that's important because if you don't kind of break up your practice routine, then it's very easy, especially with all our distractions that we have in the modern world, to get sidetracked. And we spend all our time watching YouTube videos on the latest gear, right? I mean, I, I love to watch those videos too, but you have to be really diligent about putting in that practice time in the woodshed. And if you want to watch videos on gear or other stuff, that's fine, but but limit it and schedule it and break up the practice so you're hitting everything. Put, put a part time for songwriting, right? And, 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 and working on coming up with creative things. You, again, you're breaking, you're, you're scheduling your practice time and then you're breaking it into subsets. Another thing you wanna do in your practice uh, routine is you wanna try to, a couple minutes a day, try to get the notes on the neck down, learn all the notes on the neck. And I know that's hard and a lot of students, you know, are really are off put by doing it, but I'm telling you, it makes such a big difference. You'll know what notes make up which chords. It'll help you with your songwriting. It'll help you land on certain hip notes when you're soloing. It's such a big deal, and so many students bypass that stuff. And it's and, and so many people make it so much harder than it is. It's very easy. And if you need help with that, um, I get my ebook. I have the ne the, the the neck diagrammed out, every note, and some tips on how to learn that. And it's free. So click on that link in the um, text box 
in the YouTube description box, you'll get a free video lesson on lead guitar playing. We're using a lot of this stuff we're talking about, and you'll get that ebook. And that ebook has tons of stuff in it that'll help you with your practice. And I'll mention some more as we go. But one of them is I have the the neck diagram and how to go about learning those notes on the neck. So be sure you check that out. And as you're learning those notes, and always as you're as you're noodling around on the guitar, always know what key you're in. That's going to help you too. Um, even if you're just kind of sitting there in front of the TV and just kind of practicing your techniques or practicing bending or working with some finger exercises or whatever, just know the, the key you're in. That'll really help you for when you go to soloing. It's, 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 it's kind of almost will make it into your subconscious that you'll know the key you're soloing in. Very important. So since we're talking about lead guitar, we have to talk about the building blocks of lead guitar, which are basically scales, right? Um, scales are what we use uh, to build our riffs, to build our licks, to build our solo. So you, with lead guitar, you gotta learn some scales. And I'll go over a batting order for learning those scales when you're practicing in a minute. But just don't learn the scale alone. That, that, that's another critical practice thing that so many students fall trap of. Someone just teaches a scale and that's it. And you just learn that. You just don't want to learn the scale. First of all, you want to learn the notes that make up the scale. So you're just not learning shapes. Too many guitar players just know shapes. That's that's not enough. You just don't want to know the shape. You want to know how to connect it with other scale. You want to know the notes that make up that scale. This is all critical information that'll just help you make be a better musician, help you speak the language of music. Um, but you also want to know how to apply that scale, how to use it, right? Learning the scale is only half the battle. You could know every scale ever created, ever built by man, but if you don't know how to use it in a musical situation, what good is it, right? So you just don't want to learn scale. You want to know what chords they work over, over what key can you use them. Learn the scale, but also learn how to apply it musically. So important. All this when you're learning the scale. So learn the scale, learn the notes, learn how to connect it with other scales, up and down the neck and learn how to apply it. Start off with the minor pentatonic scale because that's probably the most common scale used in most genres of music. Except maybe classical, but most genres, minor pentatonic, pentatonic scales are your most common scales, right? So you want to learn the minor pentatonic scale and start with that basic box shape that everybody knows, right? And if you don't know that yet, again, get that ebook because I have all the pentatonic scales diagrammed out all over the neck. Click on that link below. Um, you want to learn the basic box shape, yes, but then learn all the shapes that run across the neck and then learn the expanded scales. Those are the scales I teach where we connect the shapes together and you get to start playing horizontally across the neck and not just vertically up and down, right? You want to play across the neck. It's a lot more fluid sounded than just staying and getting hemmed into one box. So learn your pentatonic scales and you want to learn all the positions, learn the expanded scales. You can also learn the blues scale by adding that blue note because that's important for blues and rock. And again, I have all those scales diagrammed out in the ebook. Pentatonics, blues scales across the whole neck, expanded scales. And those are really going to help you because you start to see the neck visually as one big scale and not just as these individual boxes. Start with that. And as you're beginning your guitar, lead guitar journey, you want to get comfortable in soloing in major key and minor key. And there's modal keys too, but 95% of the time you're going to be soloing in major key and minor key. So you got to how to learn how to solo in both and you need uh, an arsenal, so to speak, right? An arsenal of destruction to how to do that for both. And, and minor pentatonic or pentatonic scales will give you that in the beginning. So you wanna also, besides learning your minor pentatonic scales, you wanna learn how to flip those into major pentatonic scales. And it's very easy because you don't have to learn a whole new set of scales. We're just gonna flip what you already know and learn the, the, the principle of major and relative minor. Again, I teach that in the ebook. Make sure you get it, man. It's a really good ebook. And by the way, I redid that ebook. So if you have the old one, Click on that link anyway. I'll give you'll get the newest updated one. Tons of stuff, um, and, I, and I'm not just trying to get you to click on the link too because I just want you to have that ebook because it, it'll have all this stuff diagrammed out for you. And sometimes it's nice to look at it on paper, and it's free, so why not grab it, right? Learn your major pentatonic scales as well as your minor pentatonic scales. This way you'll be covered for major and minor, and that really helps in the beginning because you're not gonna be able to use minor pentatonic for everything, especially if it's real major sounding chords, ballady sounding stuff, real majory sounding progressions. Um, you're gonna be leaning more toward the major line of things.
I'm also a big believer that finger exercises really help. They help tie your left and right hands together. They help your fingers become more strong and more dexterous. Remember, the stronger your fret hand, I'm a big believer in, the more you could do with the notes, the more bending, the more stretching, um, the more tone you're gonna have, right? So finger exercises are important. I'm not a huge fan of doing lots of exercises that aren't very musical sounding because you really can't apply them musical, musically except in the case of finger exercises. Very important. Um, you want to do those five to seven minutes a day. They'll help your picking. I have tons of them on the website. Um, I also cover those in the ebook, And uh, they will really, really help you just doing them diligently every day. You'll see improvement, right? Take it from me. I've taught hundreds of thousands of students all over the world, and they all share that same approach it man i've been doing these fingers i could see the improvement in a couple weeks and then man look where i was a month ago i couldn't even play that one pattern now i'm flying up and down the neck right finger exercises make a big difference give you that dexterity that strength and that fret hand that's so important for your lead playing but again don't go overboard with them and there's tons of them out there so you can mix them up five minutes a day is plenty then once you learn some scales right and you and you're doing your finger exercise you can start doing things with the notes you want to start working on things like technique right? You want to start working on things like bending and vibrato and hammers and pull-offs and getting your technique down. That's going to be a big part of your sound, how you're attacking those strings, how you're bending them, how you're laying into them, how you are uh, attaching your licks together into phrasing. That all goes into your tone, right? What makes you sound like you. So you want to spend part of your practice on working on things like string bending, bending in pitch. Remember, every time you bend a string, you're bending it to a target note. Usually it's the next note in the scale and you want to make sure you're matching that pitch. You're not overbending it or underbending it, sound out of key. So you want to practice, have a few minutes a day, work on your vibrato. So important. Your vibrato is like your fingerprint. You can really identify a player by their vibrato. Working on your hammers and pulls, working on your techniques that go into how you work the notes. Because it's not just the notes you play or what you pick from the scales, but how you play them, right? What you're doing to those notes, how you're playing them in, in, in a musical way and making them sound musically interesting. And you want to apply them, apply what you're learning, apply the scales. And you do that by practicing over jam tracks. And that's so critical. You really want to have some of your lead practice time working over jam tracks in various tempos, in different keys, different uh, chord changes, right? And that's how you're really going to hone your craft and refine your art. Practicing over jam tracks is invaluable. I can't say that enough because as opposed to just noodling around by yourself, here you'll have chords going on underneath and you'll want to target certain notes in those chords to make songs, strong solo statements. And you'll have to be playing in time. You'll have a rhythm section behind you. Leave lots of space for your notes to breathe. And you can't do things like that just noodling around on your own, right? You need that musical kind of pathway underneath you, that pad, right, to practice on top of. So practice over jam tracks. Jam tracks are available, readily available everywhere. You can get them online. I have some, you can check those out. I have a lot actually. Um, uh, but you want to really work on looking at those tracks, not just the key, look at the chords that are going on underneath what's playing on, a, on that track chordal wise and that's what's going to give you the roadmap to what you can use soloing and improvisation wise the chords the chords are what give you the roadmap not just the key the key is only part of it so you got to look at the chords so any tracks you get good jam tracks will also come with what's the progression that you don't want to get tracks and have that left out what are the chords being played because remember we're studying our scales and what scales sound good over which chords what sounds best to your ears and speaking of ears another thing is you really want to develop your ear one of the most Important things you could do as a musician. Get all the ear training lessons, ear training materials you can get your hands on and really develop that ear. So critical. So as a batting order after you're working on your major and minor pentatonic scales and you know them up and down the neck, right? Then start to tackle things like your full-on diatonic scales, like your major scales and your natural minor scales. Those scales are critical. You'll be using those all the time and learn those up and down the neck and learn those in various keys and practice those over jam tracks. Okay, I have all those diagrammed out in that ebook, um, up and down the neck. Um, very, very important. I love using the natural minor scale. Um, so that's a good batting order for learning your scale, especially if you're like a blues rock player. Um, then after you get those down, then you want to start getting into the modes of the major scale. 
And that's where things really start to open up the fretboard. A lot of people just stop at minor pentatonic, and I don't understand why. I mean, I guess if that's like what you like and, and, and you don't want to go any further, okay, there's so many different ways of dealing this. You know, this is just the way that I have found that my students really progress quickly, and I'm trying to impart some of that knowledge, and hopefully it'll help you in your guitar journey, but there's so many different ways to skin the cat. Um, you, can, you could do lots of different things. I'm just giving you one path. Um, and I strongly suggest looking at the modes of the major scale because each of those modes give you a different mood and a different sound and it's really all about the sounds. You know, it's all about the sounds and what sounds best to your ears. You got to find out what sounds best to your ears. One of the best exercises you could do is just sit there and, 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 and play a chord or have one chord just jamming in the background and play different scales over the top of it and see what's, wow, I really like that. Or play notes. I really like that combination of notes over that chord. I really like the way this chord sounds, uh, this scale sounds over this chord. And that's, that's, that's really good stuff because it really dials your ear into it and find out what you like, right? So the modes of the major scale, and if they're not that complicated, I, I teach those in the ebook also. Um, click on that link, um, get that ebook. Did I mention that yet? Um, okay, I digress. Um, anywho, um, I love playing in the modes, and, and, and if you're a blues guy, blues rock guy, metal guy, you definitely want to start investing some time into learning the modes in your practice routine. Good ones to start off with is, is natural minor, which is also called Aeolian mode. You'll be using that all the time. Um, also, Dorian, the second mode in any major key. Natural minor is the sixth mode. You also want to look at Mixolydian, especially if you're playing a lot of seventh chords, like in blues, you'll be using Mixolydian a lot. Um, Phrygian, I love Phrygian too. It gives you a very exotic sound. Um, so those are some modes that you could start with. Um, just pick them off one at a time. You know, again, it's an evolution. Your playing is an evolution. You don't need to take, you know, all these things and work on, you know, just a couple at a time. Chip away, chip away, keep chipping away a little bit every day and you will get there. Other things you could do in your lead guitar journey that I think have a lot of value would be just to learn some triads and some arpeggios. Um, and learn how to move those around on a neck. Learn them in different positions. Learn them. Start off with, with arpeggios. The easiest ones to learn at first are roots on the low E string and the A string. Sixth and fifth string tri uh, tri arpeggios. Triads, you could start learning your basic major and minor. Um, triads, they're super helpful. Super melodic. You could get into songwriting, get into building your leads off of triads. A guy who does that really well is a guy like David Gilmore. From Pink Floyd, right? Listen to some of his solos. Incredibly melodic. He's always playing for the song. That's that's important because remember, in the end, as much as great stuff we could do soloing, it's the song that will be remembered, right? So you know, you always want to play for the song, not for yourself. Okay, and uh, melody is so huge in our solos. You always want to come up with that melody line. That's that's how you'll get things to stick in people's heads, right? like the choruses of songs, whether they always saying, get to the chorus, get to that hook. That's what the catchiness, that's what gets people, that's what they could get their head wrapped around. I'm not saying write catchy pop songs. I'm just saying, consider, perhaps consider adding some melody into your solos, you know, and then vary the melody a little bit. Get a lick you like, vary it, add that melody. Study and learn some of the leads of your favorite guitar players, you know. We're all amalgamates of our influences, right? We take a little bit of this guy, a little bit of that guy, a little bit of that girl, a little bit of him, a little bit of her, and we kind of, we like that, and we kind of put our own spin on it, a heavy dose of you, and you make it your own, right? So we're all amalgamates of our influences. So you wanna take some of those solos of some of your favorite players and study them. Pull them apart, find out why, why they work, right? Why you like that why it sounds good to your ears and then you know put your own twist on it and kind of make it your own and play with the notes and 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 do things a little bit differently um, but it's all around off the stuff that sounds good to your ears remember it's all about the sound so i think there's a lot of value in learning the solos and i'm not saying go out there and learn every solo note for note but pick a few apart find a few sections of songs of so or solos or soloists solo uh, guitar players or guitar players playing solos that you like and and dig into them and and uh, there's a lot of value in that to sum it all up i wrote this down this one section down i hate reading when i do stuff like this but i, I think this kind of encapsulates a lot of what i just kind of went over and i don't want to mess it up so um see if this makes sense to you um keep in mind that in this stage of your guitar journey right in this stage of your lead guitar journey there's just no substitute for 
practicing the right things, you know, scheduling your practice time, breaking it up into sections, learning scales, studying the sounds and the relationships between chords and scales, developing your ear, practicing and honing your skills using jam tracks, and continually pushing yourself to that next level, Continual, continually refining your art and honing your skills. And that's a big thing on guitars. You have to push yourself into the uncomfortable zone, right? Just don't want to keep doing things that you're comfortable with and that you're really good at. Push yourself into that uncharted waters, right? It's hard. It's hard work, but so worth it. And that's how you get better. Keep pushing yourself. And I keep pushing my students to, 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 to harder, challenging exercises, learning harder things, harder songs, more challenging lead guitar work, because that's what's going to make you better, and it makes the easier stuff like butter, right? So I hope these uh, practice tips help you along in your guitar journey. Remember, you can't learn less. Remember, your guitar playing is an evolution, and it takes time. Chip away at it every day. Pick up that guitar, even if it's only for 10 minutes. You have 10 spare 10 minutes in the morning and in, at night. Those little pockets of time make a big difference. You don't necessarily need an hour or two hours every day. If you have that time, great. But if not, little pockets of time works wonders and really, really adds up. I want to thank you so much for watching and for subscribing. I want to thank you for your support over the years. I'm David Taub, co-creator of Next Level Guitar. You're the good people. Uh, remember, uh, put those comments below what you want to see coming up in these Guitar Gab episodes. We're here to help. I, want, I wish you the best in your guitar journey. Keep putting that guitar in your hands every day. Keep on rocking. I will see you in the next lesson. Rock on.